Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities in Miniatures, and I had to pull the trigger. I could not resist this most deliciously out of control Necromunda model, Mr. Durgan Killfist. Come on, man, who who names themselves these? This is like, yeah, I don't, it's my parents' maiden, my mother's maiden name. Look at him, he's carrying like a four-pronged bladed staff, powered staff at that, Metal mohawk, as always. Look at the, his hand. He's like punching with a bear trap meat tenderizer thing. I think he's actually got a hand inside there. I don't think he's actually like replaced it like a stump with that thing. Uh, I could be wrong. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's too many pieces. I mean, if you're into a lot of pieces. Personally, I like when models are somewhat complex and have lots of little parts, but that's okay. Let us slice it open and see what we've got inside here now for whatever reason i had been under the impression that he was an actual goliath but i guess not he's an outlaw this is interesting <laughs> look the the rules card inside they even punched out for the hanging clamshell thing that's not too bad it's only seven parts i can handle that let us take a look at said parts. So first off, you'll notice that the body itself is predominantly one piece. That's always nice to see. And I gotta say, for the most part, the modern... No, I was gonna say Necromundo. Well, yeah, Necromundo. I was gonna say the modern Forge World stuff that I've built definitely is pretty crisp. I haven't had many complaints I've heard those stories about the old stuff, haven't experienced it myself. Interesting that he does not have any kind of a traditional key joint going with the kind of triangular setup there. Got the main section of his staff there. Nice details with the chains hanging off. It's not a Goliath gang member or an outlaw. Ex-Goliath, I guess, without those. This is unfortunately going to be fun. If you haven't experienced this, this is pretty typical with the resin that you get from Forge World Kits. It's like, it almost looks like scan lines there, like styrations in the, the resin. But where these blades are sticking off of the main head of the staff, there's a lot of little flimsy film that's going to need to be cut off there. Okay, here we have his grimacing head, which, from the looks of it, I mean, I think you could probably get away with actually using that on another Goliath if you were so inclined. I'm not. And he does have a hand. Check it out. It's in there. So if you wanted to leave off that pulverizer kill fist part of it in order to paint it better, that is a possibility. Me, you know I'm just going to go all in. I'm going to glue it all together and... Cuss up a storm, trying to figure out how I'm going to get my paintbrush in there later on. That's just how we roll, baby. All right. 32 millimeter base, as is quite common with most of the Goliaths. Yep, they fit. Good to see. Is this guy any bigger? Not exactly. Actually, it's almost smaller. I put it on camera. We'll see how things turn out in the end, obviously. All right, what do we got here? The other section of his staff, along with a belt, loincloth, grenades. Typical fashion accessories for the underhive. And finally, his other hand, I should say arm, that is going to be carrying that big old staff. And the killy part of the kill fist. So you can see here. Does need a little bit of cleanup down there though. Not that anybody's ever really going to be able to notice any of that. Will I probably attempt to? Maybe. Will I enjoy building this regardless? Absolutely. And if you can hold on about five more seconds while I stop rambling, I will get it all glued together. And happily show it off. So that probably means there's an ad right now. So, so tight. We'll be back in a sec. All right, our kill fist has been all put together. 
As you can see here, he definitely looks like he's going to put the hurt on people. And of course, now that I'm filming this, I can see I still need some cleanup there on the little spikes on his shoulder pad. There is that noticeable space in between his meat tenderizer fist and the actual hand grasping it, so do be aware of that. Uh, I would probably leave it off if I was going to paint to a higher degree of quality than I usually do, but I won't. I don't see anywhere for him to be packing a pistol. I know I was reading the rules for um, the Ajax Gorgoroth, and he's supposed to have a pistol somewhere, but underneath all those chains, I don't know where it's supposed to be. I love that staff of his. I don't know if I have it at the exact angle that they show in the artwork, and I mean, I didn't do the greatest job cleaning off those blades. You can see there's a little bit of leftover flash here and there, but I mean, overall, gets the job done. Now, he is on his actual base. That's a 32 millimeter, <clears throat> whereas like Mr. Gorgoroth here, who hopefully is no longer unpainted, but at least he is in this video, uh, you can see he's on that 40. Substantially larger, an actual Goliath, but do keep in mind that this guy is actually part of the outlaws. He is an outlaw for faction purposes, so if you wanted to go ahead and you know have him rolling with your Orlocks or your dirty imperial hobos if that's your thing i mean you know you can see he's got that goliath lineage in him still of course some of us have far more painted goliaths than we do other gangs at this point so that's what we're gonna grab fits right in with him i mean if you wanted to use him as maybe not a you know person of intrigue or whatever and just have him as a generic goliath uh, i absolutely could see that working quite nicely again grabbing some of the more varied humans of the underhive at least in plastic i don't have a whole lot of extensive resin stuff from forge world i'd love to change that i mean honestly and truly i really do enjoy a lot of the Necromunda stuff. I'm going to try and drag out some of my Vansar. It's a lame looking plasma gun I did. Well, what you going to do? <clears throat> yeah, I think outside of maybe the Escher stuff, I've got pretty much extensive gangs painted for every group at this point. Members painted for every gang, I guess I should say. You wanted to use him as some kind of a crazy... To me, I mean, this is like a perfect chaos cultist. And, I mean, I'm looking at, like, the new World Eater stuff. You know, like the Jackals especially. I mean, I think they'd make... Other than the, you know, obvious uh, corn iconography all over them. Uh, I think they'd make some interesting, you know, Corpse Griders, Goliath members, you know, with the actual Lord of the Eightfold Path here. I don't know where I put all my other corpse grinders, and I have a fully painted set of them. I grabbed the half a box that they were included with the starter set for. It was like them and the enforcers, I think it was. Shoot, you know what? <clears throat> now that I think about it, I have a fully unopened box of enforcers and the bigger, heavier dudes, too. I should get around to those. And we've got the Arbites coming now, too. Oh, oh the joys of having non-marine stuff for the tabletop i mean if you're going to throw this guy into like a stargrave five parsecs type situation i think even then he's going to look really cool obviously that is a 3d printed figure from the maker's cult i'm looking for a stargrave model i know i own them you do want to keep in mind basing options if you're going to mix them in with games like that because you can see here that's going to make a significant difference in the size however grabbing like some base toppers and other surplus stuff you can still see though uh, despite not being an actual goliath gang member anymore uh, you definitely would fit in quite nicely with him with that wonderful mohawk 
So I gotta say, again, kudos to Forge World for putting out some really nice models. It's nice to see actual sharp, clear, crisply cast resin coming from them. I'm old enough to remember what it used to be like. Of course, I'm spoiled on stuff like RTLW and you know, War Games exclusive, but overall, really cool character. Lots of fun, interesting, unique bits to him. And if you're like me, you're probably going to find a use for a guy like this in other games as well as Necromunda proper. Maybe that'll be one of the resolutions this year. We'll actually get a game of Necromunda in and not just like one-page rule stuff. <laughs> That's what it always ends up being. <sighs> yeah. So you know where to find them if you're interested. I honestly, I mean, I always check like, you know, eBay and some of the other, you know, online Facebooks and stuff. Uh, finding some of these models from Forge World gets to be a bit of a challenge. So I got to say, uh, outside of, you know, my, my way to go is just wait up, save up, and hopefully everything's in stock so I don't have to worry about paying shipping. Not that it's super extravagant shipping costs, but I'm a cheapskate, and I'm like, if I'm going to pay that much, I don't want to pay shipping. So, yeah. Uh, thankfully, though, we've been seeing a pretty steady release of Necromunda models on Forge World, so I know I'm going to be keeping an eye on there, and hopefully you guys are going to see some stuff there that tickles your fancy as well. So with that said, this has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures, saying thanks for watching, and we will see you back here soon. Bye-bye.